Welcome to Brightcast. Thank you for downloading. I am Renee Stowe of rainbowbright.co.uk. And I'm Katie Carty Hiley of rainbowbright.net. This is our first or pilot episode of a Brightcast that Katie and I have been playing with the idea for several years. Several years. <laughs> and it, it being the 30th anniversary of the Rainbow Bright brand, might as well go ahead and, and do it now. And share the rainbow with all the other color kids <laughs> absolutely so here we are and in the future we will be tackling more information about rainbow bright itself uh the toys the dolls uh play sets whatever the episodes the movies specials the music um there's lots of stuff we can talk about regarding Rainbow Bright that some of you out there may not be privy to. Um, but this first episode, we're just going to kind of get to, let you guys get to know us and know why we're doing this crazy thing we're doing. <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. All right. So let's start with a uh, long time ago. As everyone knows, Katie had the first Rainbow Bright website that was on the net uh, to most of our knowledge. It was definitely the first that was completely dedicated to it, I believe. There were a, a couple out there when I first got online and thought about doing a Rainbow Bright site um, that mentioned Rainbow Bright, weren't necessarily dedicated to it, but yeah, there were a couple images already on the, on the web that I thought was just super cool because I had no idea how to do that back then. <laughs> there was a lot of candy kids, lots of yes. techno music. Um, there was a big raver type atmosphere back then too so that's what i what i ran across i um i got my first computer in 1998 nice and that so i was a late bloomer uh so <laughs> well, i wasn't too far ahead of you i think i first got on the net in like 95 intermittently and got my first computer in 97 so we weren't too far off one of the first things that you looked for is you looked for okay i have the net i have the source of all the information in the world at my fingertips when I look up Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Like you do. <laughs> so uh, I, I ran across a couple of websites. I remember the first one I remember seeing had the Rainbow Bright in the black outfit with the rainbow hair. I think that was yes. yours. It was yes. the Rainbow Bright site. I do claim that image, although these days I would never do that to poor Rainbow. But like you said, it was during the Raver hype, mm -hmm. and Rainbow was the color kid um, for the color the candy kids. Uh, I remember on eBay there was all this crazy Rainbow Bright themed Raver clothing that people were making, and even the company Changes that was putting out some Rainbow Bright T-shirts made some designs that were actually Rainbow Bright and several of the color kids in Raver outfits. DJ and dancing, crazy stuff. <laughs> oh, how far we've come. So we both own something that has that on it. We do. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be hating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but that's how we, uh, that's how I first got on the net. You first got on the net doing web design and tinkering with graphics and had an 80s devoted website before rainbowbright.net. That is correct. Um, Rainbow Bright was my first web page, but my first website, which included multiple pages, was about 80s cartoons in general. So I had He-Man, I had DuckTales, actually that's more 90s, but um, I had Brave Star, I had Transformers, Voltron, Gem, My Little Pony, Care Bears, just about anything you could think of. I at least had an image of, maybe the theme song for that you could listen to. Uh, some lyrics, maybe, maybe uh, some, a small bit of information about the series. Um, but it got just out of control. I mean, this is back in the day where you were paying for bandwidth, like per megabyte. Mm -hmm. um, and it started really to catch on, you know, the whole nostalgia kick. Um, so I was getting tons of traffic and was paying like a hundred bucks a month to keep that thing going. And I'm like, well, I love my 80s cartoons, but I'm a teenager. I don't have that kind of money right now. Um, so I, I took it down, which I hated to do, but I started over from scratch. And that's when I started my first Rainbow Bright site, which later got the domain name of rainbowbright.net. 
And I had some help. Um, one of the first sites I found online that had any mention of Rainbow Bright was Cardigan, um, also known as Vincent Wales, who's an, who's an author now. Mm-hmm. Um, you've probably seen my story about it on the Facebook page recently because I finally got to meet him in person. But he had a funny story about his niece loving Rainbow Bright and her introducing him to it. He was in college, but he actually thought it was a cute character. And some of his buddies found out about this and, of course, teased him endlessly that this college-age guy would love a kitty cartoon like Rainbow <laughs> Bright. So it's kind of the the hate that the bronies are getting these days. He was experiencing it back then. Oh, wow. <laughs> the um, so he... Uh, started the Rainbow Bright web ring and that's how I became acquainted with him and his site and he helped me make my first web page he helped me rotate some images that I had scanned sideways and had no idea what to do with um so that was the community of the internet back then I don't know if it is so much these days but because it was so new we we were encouraging others to make it grow and anytime somebody would email me, I'd be happy to jump in and help them with whatever question they had. And people did the same with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really think that's how it, it became what it did and how I was able to get as far with it as I did. Cause I was just teaching myself. <laughs> there were no classes you could take back then for web design. There wasn't? Or at least nowhere I was, um, not in my high school, oh, so to speak. Yeah. In college, tech colleges probably were starting around that time. Um, but in my high school, I think the only computer class they had was intro to computers. How do you turn it on? How do you use a mouse? <laughs> you know? From there, the website just kept growing. And at the time, there were a lot of Rainbow Bright websites out there. Like after mine got started, it kind of caught on. And fan pages in general were a big thing back then, which I miss. There used to be a ton of them. And now it's just pared down to a few that are still out there, you know, especially once they took down GeoCities, we lost half the Rainbow Bright web pages. Well, on <laughs> actually, they're still there. Well, that's true. <laughs> Somebody downloaded them and re-put them up, right? Well, there's a, it's like an offsite. It's like GeoCities, only like the first letter is something different, and it has an archive of all the old websites. Well, that's awesome. So, so some of them are still out there. They may ha- not have any images on them any longer. <laughs> or they're broken. They have that horrible little yeah. red X of death. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a really cool community that formed at that time and we had a an a mailing list, an email list mm-hmm. that began. I believe it was on one list to begin with and then eventually uh switched over to Yahoo groups. Mm-hmm. And we were like we were creating some serious traffic there for a while. Like I remember days where there'd be a hundred emails going back and forth in a day. Oh, yeah. When, I like looking at the old calendar and you see like in one month, like all the thousands of hits and it's just like, <gasps> and I, right. I suddenly feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> I mean, rainbow bright just turned 30. I'm not going to talk about how old that makes me. Um, Eventually but, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that in, in a bit. <laughs> Um, but that also helped grow the fan base, Mm -hmm. grow the the community. We started message boards Mm -hmm. later on, which we do still maintain that. And we, the main, the mailing list is still there. Just doesn't get much traffic these days, sadly. It gets spam. Um, Yeah, it does get that. (laughs) (laughs) But now we also have Facebook and Twitter that we can keep in contact with fans through and they can contact each other. Yeah. So it's, it's just evolved over the years. It's moved from one medium to another, but I think. The, the main fan base is still there. Some have dropped out. You know, I, I miss a few of the, the regulars from back in the day that have moved on to other things. Um, so virtual wave to you guys if you're out there listening. Yeah, really. I remember when I, um, when I used to go to the website, it would always be Pink Glitter. Uh-huh. And, of course, Sunspire. Yes. And mm-hmm. Evil Greenie. Oh, yeah. And... There was, I think there was a few others, Suki, and of course, a major Ursa was always there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so back to the questions that we were thinking about doing to get everybody to get to know us. This is, you said, you've seen where we came from on the net, but when do you remember first hearing about Rainbow Bright? Okay, um... Probably not until the episodes, well... Actually, maybe before that, because the dolls came out first. And what I remember most, oddly enough, is the commercials. Because there was the cereal, 
and there were the commercials for the dolls where they put in the uh, an edited version of the song from Wizard of Oz, yes. Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Mm-hmm. And I used to purposely annoy my brother by running around singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow, Rainbow Bright. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that's actually the probably the first thing I remember. But I did have a couple of the dolls. I have pictures as proof because otherwise I would not remember when I got them. Um, I believe it was 1984, at the end of 84, for my birthday, I got my first Rainbow Bright doll. Um, and then for Christmas, I got a couple more. But I don't have a lot of childhood memories. I remember identifying with it, the whole rainbow thing, because I'd always loved rainbows. And I definitely remember eating the cereal, even though it tasted horrible, <laughs> but it was rainbow bright. So <laughs> you had to, it was just part of the, it was part. It, part yeah. Of the it wasn't yeah. Smurf berries. Smurf berries were yes. awesome. Yeah, they were. I missed those. <laughs> um, but it, it just, it was something always in the back of my mind as, mm-hmm. you know, through childhood. What about you? I first got introduced to rainbow bright um, through coloring books my mom would get me coloring books so I could color and then I watched the uh, first television special um, which was the peril in the pits I'm trying to remember the memory is a little foggy but um, I I also had the record album and the tapes Uh, the storybook tapes taught me how to read (laughs) seriously that's awesome you're sitting there and you're listening you're reading along with the book and it was like the Blue, green, you, you picked up the small ones <laughs> that repeated themselves often. Uh, yes. <laughs> so you, you could go around and say, that's just so well. course, the colors were your first words as well. Yes. <laughs> nice. Um, I remember seeing the movie, uh, Winter of 85, and then I didn't see anything else. It disappeared, and it's not because of me. It, I didn't have television. I was busy watching He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, my nice. my dad had taped all the episodes of He Man without the commercials, and I thought that was the only thing on television because that's the only <laughs> thing that was there when I turned it on. That's hysterical! <laughs> and, oh, you missed out on all those wonderful commercials. <laughs> yes, I didn't. I, I don't remember the commercial. I remember the cereal because again, it was bland tasting. I expected something more fruity. Yeah, it's very bland tasting, and I used to cut up the boxes and make paper dolls out of them. Oh, that's awesome. Play. Uh, and, but yeah, um, after that, I don't remember seeing the other Rainbow Bright episodes after I saw Mighty Monster Book Menace, Peril in the Pits, and the beginning of Rainbow Land and the feature film. And then I thought Rainbow Bright went away until I oh. went to your website and was like, there's more? <laughs> That was very frustrating in the early days of the internet before YouTube and all this. I remember going to a, it was like a, a record store, I guess you'd call it, in the mall, where they mostly sold tapes. It was before CDs or right around the time of CDs. It was mostly cassette tapes, though. Still had some vinyl in there. And they had a huge catalog of things you could order that they didn't necessarily have in stock. And they did sell some VHS tapes. And I remember being so excited because they had a huge number of Rainbow Bright and the He-Man and Strawberry Shortcake, all these VHS tapes. And I figured, oh, well, if it's in the book, I can order it. So I put in a huge order for all these VHSs. And then they call me like the next day. They're like, oh, yeah, we don't we don't carry those anymore. I was like, no. That's where I really miss the old VHS tapes stores. There used to be these stores that were so huge. It was just aisles and aisles of tape boxes with the yes. rubber band around it that had the paper clip stuck on top that tells you whether or not it was in or out. And nice. <laughs> and they used to have the big clamshells in the kids section, and I'd always go over there. And you had the Disney set, and then you had the Rainbow Bright, and of course you had the robots, the little the little robot with a little pink heart on its chest and we had um lots of other little kids cartoons that were done by i believe the same company um and then uh Hmm. when these things went out of business when dvds became popular it was just like these were thrown in the bargain bin and i actually found some there was like yes it's mine and then i opened it up and the label had fallen off (laughs) oh fail (laughs) I actually have one where it's like it has the three episodes on it. It was um, Invasion of Rainbow Land, 
tape. Yeah, that. that's a good one. You had the first episodes. When it got to the third one, the tape snagged. Oh, and no! And it, it, it won't play past that part. But at least I got the first two episodes. But it wouldn't play past <laughs> that part. And I actually had to take the tape apart and untwist it. But I guess wow. it still plays. Hey, kudos to you. <laughs> But yeah, I remember resorting to having to go to Blockbuster and the other local video rental stores and finding whatever Rainbow Bright tapes they had, bringing them home, and I may have even bought a second VCR for the purpose of copying them. Mm -hmm. I don't remember having two at the time, but I knew that these things were not going to be around much longer, so I would... I checked out all the 80s cartoons I could find, basically. I've still got a big stash of VHSs that I really don't need anymore now that I'm getting these these things on DVD. Yeah. But it, they're fun to have around. It's part of the yes. collection at this point. And honestly, it's um, you you a lot of the tapes you really do need to hold on to because they are releasing DVDs that are incomplete. Yes, tell us about that. I know you have a lot of information on that. Yes. Um. Well, in in other the DVD releases of other videos such as the Don Bluth films they'll like miss a whole channel of sound and they'll replace it with something else or voices will change that weren't there or lines will be completely missing in the case of rainbow bright if you get the dvd copies now this is the dvd copies from anywhere for example peril in the pits is swiss cheese they oh, no. take out if you have the original tape of Peril in the Pits. There's lots of dialogue, lots of banter, which I'm thinking the reason that it's in the ones in the U.S. is because the humor was more American. Uh. And if it went over to England and, you know, Brian says, well, I'm not a bee's belly, they cut out that line from where he turned into a rainbow. And then <laughs> um, they, they left out the Whew, you have more questions than colors, <laughs> which is one of oh, my... I love that line. I love it, and it's gone. You look at any of the DVDs, and it's not there. Oh, that's pathetic. And that's in all the languages. I I I, I looked through the Italian, the French. Um, I don't have the German, uh, the Mexican or Spanish one, and mm -hmm. all of them are cut up. They don't have those lines even translated into those languages. It's gone. Jeez. And uh, then there is, as for time space, I actually, um, I have a, a video, and I'll probably upload it maybe to YouTube, that will could put side-by-side -side comparison of the uh, British DVD, Peril in the Pits, opening scene, versus the v original VHS. And you can see where they just cut it up to bits. And they, mm. they say these things are not official, but someone took a lot of time to go mm -hmm. through and edit out all these little things for this thing not to be official. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. Well, we here at the Rainbow Bright Preservation Society <laughs> will make sure that the original episodes are not lost forever. Well, I remember the first time I saw Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer was actually in high school. A friend of mine, or it was a friend of my stepsister, actually, found out that I was a fan of Rainbow Bright and was starting this collection, which was in its infancy at, at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, oh, I've got, you know, this Rainbow Bright movie that my dad taped off of TV. And I'm like, there's a movie? So she brings it over. And I remember just sticking it in the VCR and starting it up with the song. And I was just... I was squeeing before I knew what squeeing was. <laughs> and I remember grabbing a pad of paper and writing down the lyrics to Brand New Day so I could put them online at some point. That thing is an earwig. It gets stuck in there and it just yes. repeats. Ah. <laughs> there is so much good music associated with Rainbow Bright. I can't wait to talk about all of that yes. at some point. Yes, we're going um, to talk about the videos. We're going to talk about the music. We're going to talk about, you know, the dolls and, you know, even, yeah, we're going to get there eventually. Yes. You got to, you have to tell us if you're listening to this, you have to tell us what it is that you want to know. Yes, we are here for you. Awesome. Okay. So, um, Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention from childhood yeah. that I remembered after the fact, um, I was rainbow bright for Halloween when I was six. So I guess. 
Was that 1986 or 87? Uh, I'll have to look at my pictures. I think it was 86. Mm -hmm. Or was it 85? Maybe I was just about to turn six. Yeah. Or just had turned six. Whatever. One of those years. Um, My mom made me the Rainbow Bright costume from the pattern. She spent hours on that thing. And I still have it. Still love it. Oh, you haven't let your niece try it on? Not yet. I was going to wait. Well, she's about to turn... Oh my word, is she about to turn six herself? I can't even keep up with how old these kids are. <laughs> they grow so fast. I know. It may it may be about time to let her try it on. If I can part with it. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think her trying it on and parting with it are technically two yes. different things, I think. That is true. That is true. All right. So well, I was gonna ask you, we mentioned, you know, what we remembered from childhood, but I know you had a lot more of the toys than I did. Yeah. I was curious which toys you remember playing with as a child. All of them. No, I, I, uh, my first toy, my very, very first Rainbow Bright toy was Twink. Uh, oh. You know, my mom wanted me to feel like I was Rainbow Bright, so she got me Twink. I love Twink. And, uh, my second was the 18 inch Rainbow Bright doll that my father had actually mailed to me. He was in Georgia, I was in California. He actually mailed it to me for my fifth birthday. So I got them around the same time, but I had Twink first. And so uh, Twink was officially my first toy, but before that I had the puzzles and the coloring books. Uh, Nice. Then, I don't know about, you didn't have a sister growing up. I had a sister growing up. So (laughs) my sister Michelle, who is a year and a half older than me, whenever I got something, she had to have something similar. So I actually ended up later on in life... Uh, with two Starlights, two Puppy Brights, and because if I got one, she got one, and it was a way, oh, that's hilarious. It was a way to keep the sibling rivalry down. Uh, <laughs> but in turn, I also got Shy Violet because I think I got Patio Green and she got Shy Violet, and then when she got older and she gave me all her toys, I ended up getting all of them. Um, Score. seriously but I did not know about the small dolls at one point I actually had a tickled pink that I picked up from a thrift store but I didn't know who she was I thought she was baby bright I thought I go they shrunk baby bright <laughs> <laughs> did she get I can older? see where that confusion would come from <laughs> <laughs> did she get older or something and small and uh, I, I again this were, this was because I wasn't exposed to the television show after 85 so I didn't get to see any of the tickle pink the stormies the moon glows I didn't get to see any of that except what was in the catalog and ah. I was wondering why because when you see the picture you don't know how big they are yeah you think that these are I had rainbow bright so I thought rainbow bright was supposed to be 18 inches and I thought my mine was maybe missing her twink I don't know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but then my mom also got me the other play sets. I had the a cheerleading little play set. I had the bath stuff. I used to always sit in the bathtub with my little soap boat and wonder why it wouldn't float straight. <laughs> I still don't know why that. <laughs> well, it's not really evenly weighted, is it? No, it's got a little cork thing in the bottom, but it doesn't come out. And then when you put it in the water, it's a little heavier on rainbow side because she's bigger. So, and yeah, but it will float, but it kind of floats kind of catty corner. (laughs) And it's just like, don't go overboard. There wasn't a lot of quality control back then. (laughs) We we weren't going for realism. We were going to go, you're going to put your soap in this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But, uh, but that was it as for collecting. Uh, Other than that, I remember seeing the re-release in the nineties, but we're going to get to that in a second. Um, which is actually the next question. <laughs> it is. Did you go through the, your teenage adult years with Rainbow Bright, or did you take a break for a while? I, sad to say, did take a break from the rainbow. Not from rainbows in general. I always loved those. But yeah, indeed. Yeah, and I, I guess my childhood was stunted a bit because my parents divorced when I was 11. So I was going through a big transition, moving in with my mom and Mm -hmm. moving out of my childhood house and belongings, getting lost in the shuffle, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just teenage drama in general is enough to keep your mind full at all times. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, all of my childhood nostalgia disappeared for a while. And... uh, Then I believe I was 15. 
I had just gotten my driver's license because in South Carolina, you get it really early. <laughs> um, so after school, I would drive to the thrift store because if I ever went there with my dad or mom or whoever, um, I mean, actually, my mom probably would have stayed there for a while, but anyone else would have gotten bored very quickly. And I like to take my time and go Ooh. through everything. So I started going, I was just looking for like vintage clothing. That was kind of my style for a while. And I just happened to go through the toy aisle and the aisle of random misfit items. Mm -hmm. And I believe, if I remember right, the first thing I came across Rainbow Bright was the record player. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. It's a Rainbow Bright record player. <laughs> I didn't care if it worked or not. And I don't believe it does, but <laughs> I had to have it. And then I found some Rainbow Bright sheets. And then I started finding a few dolls here and there because people my age were starting to get rid of such things. Mm -hmm. And not me. For... <laughs> yeah, good for you. Not me. <laughs> Somehow my, my collecting gene kicked on mm -hmm. and I just went full force. It, maybe it was just something for me to escape into for a while amidst all the other drama in my life. Um, and it wasn't just, I mean, I started, I think, with Rainbow Bright. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to collect Rainbow Bright, I should collect all these 80s cartoon items. So I was, uh, I had dolls for days. Oh, and it, at some point, I finally just came to the realization that I was not going to be able to move these things around for years to come. And I would probably never have a place to display them all. So I sold off a bunch of the random 80s cartoon things, uh, but kept all the Rainbow Bright, of course. Mm -hmm. And it ballooned from there. <laughs> What about you? For me, um, I was always into Rainbow Bright. She never left. I have all my original toys with my name written on them. Um, nice. She was, I guess, because I moved a lot. I was always moving. There was always something going on. And I had my Rainbow Bright. I mean, I had the Rainbow Bright bicycle. When I got to my teens, it didn't really go away. I mean, I had Rainbow Bright. It disappeared around 86, 87. I didn't, ha I didn't collect anymore because there was nothing else to collect. There was nothing on television. So I moved on to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> my, well, first it was Little Mermaid, then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. My bedroom at the age of 12, you would have thought was that of a 12-year-old boy. Um, my sister was in, nice. my sister's was was plastered in New Kids on the Block. <laughs> Mine was in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Little Mermaid, with rainbow bright bed sheets and Christmas lights around the door. Wicked! Uh, <laughs> I love it <laughs> uh, because I I don't know I've always been eclectic, but being the one that moves a lot, I lost so much moving Aww. i remember uh when i was 12 i moved and i actually lost some rainbow bright stuff and it broke my heart um oh, i know it did and uh all my teenage mutant Ninja turtle figures which i had actually oh my god i'm such a dork okay i actually <laughs> had them i took them out but never played with them they stood on the shelf underneath my television with their little figures and the cards packed away in little boxes and the neighbors took all of them. The the boys next door when I moved out, they they uh we didn't get to pick up our stuff for a while, and the people who moved in just threw it out in the street, and everyone had all day. <gasps> oh my word! So I I I didn't really hold on to too much because it it goes to where if you hold on to it too much, and then when it goes away, it really hurt. Yeah. And then you try to think to yourself, okay, are you gonna still collect this stuff and be hurt if you lose it? Hmm. I took that chance. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Uh, mine, I started collecting again um, in the well in the night in the late nineties. I saw the new Rainbow Bright dolls at a thrift a penny shop. That oh wow that was that was like all the bargain bin stuff. You know the off brand Spice Girl dolls from like Taiwan or something. And I saw Rainbow Bright, and my mom says, "Look, Rainbow Bright," and I was like, "That's not real. That's not." Real. <laughs> You lying. It can't be. It just can't that, be. That, that's ugly. That's not rainbow. And then I looked on it and it was like Hallmark. I was like, oh crap, it is rainbow. But I didn't buy it. Uh, I, I could have gotten all of them. All of the little, mm -hmm. uh, little 10 inch, not 10 inch, what is it? 10 inch? Little, 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 yeah, uh, about that. I could have gotten all of them in one swoop mint on card. I said no. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't until um, after school, after I got. 
uh, out of school and graduated and then of course got the internet and I found eBay or did eBay find me (laughs) and I started what I used to do was I used to go to the SNA boutique that is what I call the Salvation Army I would hit the (laughs) SNA boutique and I would go shopping every Saturday every Saturday I'd hit the SNA boutique and I would go toy bin diving i would go nice. and it's like okay what toy is this what is and i would collect the care bears and and all this stuff but i would sell them on ebay <laughs> <laughs> i'd keep the rainbow stuff for me and then i would sell i had like i found like a mego cat woman uh that was just like a little figure and i ended up putting it on ebay and it sold for 30 bucks i was very surprised <laughs> It was just a little bitty plastic. Yeah, you were smart about it. Um, but then it never crossed my mind to sell. Oh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> at least at that time. Yeah, well, I, I I couldn't sell too much because after school I went and I got a job and the full time job. I didn't have time to go online and to sell, but I had plenty of time to buy. <laughs> it's, a <lot> easier, <laughs> it's a lot easier to click the big button than it is to okay take picture, load up, post this much by right. and then have to pay all the fees at the end screw you um, <laughs> but i got a collection built back up from the time i was around 23 because that's when they released all the hot stuff at hot topic mm-hmm. and my parents got me a whole bunch of stuff and my roommate at the time got me the anniversary doll which i still have and um when i went to move when i was 25 and moved to florida where I am now um Mm -hmm. I had to make the decision and I sold everything (gasps) except anything that had physically belonged to me if it had physically belonged to me I had that memory attached to it yeah I kept it but the rest of them I sold on eBay Oh, had the I had the complete kitchen set that I found it at the Salvation Army. The kitchen, the the stove, the the I love those things. Uh, and I sold them. <laughs> okay. And I know, looking back now, you're like, how could I? But y- yeah, you got to make the decision that makes sense for the time. But oh. Overall, I don't believe I ever really took a break. It was always there. I mean, I, like I said, I had the bed sheets, and the bed sheets were always on my bed. My favorite was the comforter that mm. happy. It was not the same comforter with that has the skirt on it. My mom got me the full size bedroom, the full size uh, blanket, and it was soft and smooth. It was so squishy. It was like the inside of the sleeping bag. Oh man, I want one of those. Yeah, only it was a blanket. And I was like, I love that thing. And I had it until it quite literally fell to pieces in the washer. And then I had to get rid of it. Oh, <laughs> but don't you hate that? <laughs> like, you have all this stuff, and then the just washer decides to eat it. Or your yeah. pet decide they want to chew on it. Oh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> well, I have a bed right behind me, actually, here in my office. It's a little twin bed. That, you know, I've had these rainbow bright sheets and blankets and pillowcases, whatever, for years. Had never had a bed to put them on because I didn't want to use them myself and get them dirty and ruin them, whatever. So finally, I had this bed that I could decorate however I want. And that's what I do. I put all the sheets and pillowcases and pillow dolls and comforters and etc. And what do my pets want to do? Lay on it. They want to lay on it. They want to pull the pillow over on top of themselves. They want to scratch at the pillowcase. My dog wants to dig in the blanket to make a nest for herself. So uh, we'll see how long it lasts before I just freak out and hide it again. (laughs) You know why this is, though? Because it draws the warmth of the rainbow and they want to be in it. Oh, I like that explanation. (laughs) And it also makes the pictures I take of them even more adorable because there's rainbows all around them. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, what's that? Is that a picture of your cat on the car uh, on the blanket? Nope, that's a Christmas card. <laughs> about the dog chewing the thing off the head off that toy. That's Halloween. <laughs> you know, the worst offender is the youngest cat, Wisp. She will go up to one of my shelves, pull off a doll. And just, I I don't know if knock it is the word, but somehow get it to the bottom of the stairs. I'm not sure if it goes down in her mouth or if she just rolls it. 
But that's where I find it a day or two later and go, really? <laughs> <laughs> but she hasn't destroyed anything yet, so I can't be too mad. Mm. And Kitty Bright is her favorite, as it should be. So, you know, what can you do? But I, I also remember when the 96 dolls came out, mm-hmm. if you can call them dolls, the atrocities. Um, if I'm recalling correctly, I think... Up, up, and away. That's it. That's it. Okay. So I found their website and saw that hideous logo and just the the image that didn't look like Rainbow Bright. And I'm like, really? So I, I was kind of like, I refused to buy them for the longest time. And finally, in my first semester of college, so late 97, Mm -hmm. I had three, like my roommate and then the two girls across the hall. Mm -hmm. No, I think it was three others. I wanted to get them something for Christmas. And for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to get them the dolls. So I could say that I supported it, but not actually own it myself. (laughs) I think I did buy Rainbow Bright for myself, but I got all the color kids for them. Mm -hmm. Um they probably trashed them the next day, but <laughs> Oh, wow. And, and, you know, now I've got them all. You do? Um, just because I'm a completist. I do. Uh, I almost hate to admit it, but it's like, well, if you're going to have everything else, why not? It is official, so blah. Well, they're there. <laughs> I, I myself, um, I did, just for the sake of the website and to have something to review, I have at least all the rainbows. Nice. And like when the 2003-2004 line mm-hmm. first came out, I actually liked those dolls. I mean, obviously they're not the originals, but they were pretty close. Um, so I, I wanted them all at the time. I just was lacking the funds. Yes. So I, I'd get one here and there. And then when they finally started going on clearance, that's when I'd really snatch them up. Um, yes. I got the castle and everything, which I adore, even though the batteries don't work anymore. And I don't want to take it out of the box to replace them. Uh. Yeah, like catch twenty two. I want to hear the sound, but I don't want to open the box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I personally I I was given a, one of the uh, re released Rainbow Bright dolls be, uh, from two thousand and three by a friend who found it at yard sale. They're like, nice. it's a Rainbow Bright doll. So okay, send it to me. I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not the same it has that bright yellow hair and rainbows was supposed to be orangey looking yes and their head was like hard as a rock <laughs> yeah i never noticed that <laughs> and, well if you look at if you look at the rainbow right they're kind of soft and kind of pliable yeah. and then the the other ones are just like little rocks oh it, that's no good it's not very comfy i'm like how can i squish like this? less toxic or something <laughs> Less poisonous well, for your I, children. I, I, they noticed that they did try to fix some of the flaws from the original Rainbow Bright design with those by sewing the belt on so that it didn't fall off. <laughs> yes. But they attached the sleeves to the dress, which was kind of not right. <laughs> mm. So that was the dress. I think when the dress came off, didn't the sleeves come off? I'm probably thinking wrong. Never mind. Um, I would have to go in the next room and, and pull one off. I'm not sure. <laughs> But it wouldn't surprise me that they would do something odd like that because they were just a little bit odd. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's... I They weren't exactly like the original Rainbow Bright dolls. The, 20th, the, the 20th anniversary doll was nearly yes. spot on. I love her. Oh, yeah. And then they sewed her... The way they even sewed her bangs into her... The four, yeah! That was perfect! Right? I know. It was so cute. They should have made a whole line just like that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why they didn't, and they did. They changed it to what it was, and and then when they they shrunk the mold, and the eyes got buggy, and they put really <laughs> clownish makeup to make like really long eyelashes on like patio green. <laughs> yes, gross. <laughs> so I know I can't say that I was even fully impressed with that line. <laughs> it's like I well, want, I want Patty. I don't want a scarecrow. Thank you. Amen. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) So you can turn them into fashion dolls later, which they did, of course. But we don't want them in that mold looking like strippers. (laughs) Anyway, um, so do you collect Rainbow Bright now? Hmm. I do try to collect a few select pieces of old stuff if I can find it on eBay. Um, Mm -hmm. 
definitely like half.com which is the sort of like the buy now ebay um mm-hmm. because they can get videos and books there cheap sometimes or even itsy you can find some good stuff on itsy sweet uh, i found some... i've definitely gotten some custom things off of there but i never really looked for vintage stuff well they do have a set if you type in rainbow bright and then hit vintage you can find just the vintage materials and i actually found some nice necklaces and uh, a couple of books uh, cool. that were on there that were pretty cool yeah i'm, I'm kind of like you yeah, i'm more selective these days about what i bring home mm-hmm. um part of that is that now i finally have the space I've always wanted to display everything Mm -hmm. and there's only a little bit of space left (laughs) oh my god we've we've actually we've yeah I filled it that fast but this is all stuff I've never been able to display that I've kept in boxes for years so it was a treat to me just to get it sorry but for those who don't know Katie has uh recently moved into a new house and she now has two rooms two (laughs) To, to display her, her Rainbow Bright collection, which used to only be on, like, bookshelves. When- it's true. I I used to call it, in my in the past houses, when it was just one room, mm-hmm. it was always called the Rainbow Room. But now that it's two, I'm like, what do I call it now? Adam actually, my husband, actually said I should call it the Rainbow Bright Museum or the Rainbow Land Museum or something. Because it, it's almost to that point now. Wow. <laughs> he, he had to build me custom shelves because um, we started pricing it out to buy pre-made shelves mm-hmm. to fit, you know, fill this whole space was going to be hundreds of dollars. And it actually looks better, I think, the way he did it because um, we painted it, at least upstairs, this nice sky blue. And he made me these white shelves. Quit. It kind of looks like the dolls are sitting on clouds. It's 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 adorable. <laughs> yeah, because they have the white shelving that you can get at Lowe's and it's just the shelf. Yes. And then exactly. you just get the brackets and you just mount them that way. Precisely. So he, I mean, he had to cut a few of them to fit right, but he's got his whatever saw down there. He's, he, it's power tool talk. <laughs> I, I can't call it, but uh, yeah, he, he put all these shelves up and we got a few more at Ikea for the downstairs just to match the ones I already had. And we're already talking about what else can we do? If I can find one, I'd love to get some kind of, glass display case to put maybe in the middle of the floor in the in the downstairs room because there's just a big open floor space there mm-hmm. it's like well, what do you do with that i could find a big rainbow rug maybe but i'd prefer to have something i could put more stuff in so i could keep collecting uh- <laughs> well you can tr- check and see if like um uh the the, <laughs> the display cases that they use for like jewelry stores and stuff yeah they actually have the light stuff. in it yes that would be perfect just to put a few select items in uh, some of my favorites. Because I, I I do worry about them getting, not ruined, but just aged over the years. I mean, I've, I've tried very hard to keep everything out of direct sunlight. I need, actually, to get some, some different curtains for the downstairs room that block the light a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but even still, I, I worry. And, you know, this stuff is already 30 years old at this point. Um and most of it is held up surprisingly well. I'm thankful for that. I uh, can't say the same for some of my old collectibles, but the Rainbow Bright stuff it is actually, it was it was well made. Mm-hmm. Which, um, but yeah, I, you know, my mom every once in a while will collect something from her childhood, like Beanie and Cecil kind of dolls. And <laughs> they're just so fragile. I, I uh. just, I weep for my future self <laughs> that, <laughs> Picks up one of my Rainbow Bright dolls and their head falls off or something. <laughs> well, the, not to get, we'll just skip ahead a little bit. What are some of the of Rainbow Bright memorabilia that you have that is, um, I guess, more prized? Um, I've got my Menton Box Hard Plastic Starlight. He's definitely one of my favorites because he's so rare. Even the the ones out of the box are hard to come by. Um, but he is, I don't know if he's the only met in box when I've seen, but only one of two or three, mm-hmm. if that many have shown up on eBay or similar sites over the years. Um, and then my prototype dress up rainbow bright doll. She's probably my number one favorite because she looks like a space alien rainbow. <laughs> right? I, don't know. I think she's fantastic. Um, 
And that one was a bizarre find. It was a girl in Australia emailed me and just showed me a picture. She's like, do you know what this is? And I looked at it. Why, why, why are you gasping? <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I, I've never heard this story. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I've never heard this story. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, this is the story. She emails me out of the blue and just said, hey, I've got this doll. I don't really know what it is. It doesn't look like the other ones on your site. Can you tell me what it is? And I looked at this picture and I'm at first I'm thinking it's a custom. Yeah. It's got, it's gotta be. Um, Cause it's just an outfit I've never seen before. So I emailed her back and I said, well, I've never seen it. It is either a custom or a prototype, but prototypes are really rare. I can't imagine one got to Australia, mm -hmm. but who knows? Uh, will you send me some more photos? And so she took a bunch and it became clear pretty clear pretty quick that it was a prototype there was no tag you could tell that um especially on the back there was some it was had been hand stitched that the clothing had been hand stitched the belt that had the the regular rainbow bright rainbow kind of the, the rainbow that's on her dress yes it had that on it you could tell it was very official uh, and old enough to have been a prototype because the belt had actually broken on the back. Mm -hmm. um, it was this plasticky kind of material and just the tension from it being on her waist for that many years it had caused it to break. Um, so yeah, I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know where this came from or how you got it, but it's a prototype and I would love to have it. Um, and so, you know, she's asking me how much it's worth and I was telling her there's not a lot of prototypes that have been sold. Uh, Galacticat has a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's hard to say what any one particular one is worth, uh, if they're all worth the same, et cetera. So I, I threw some numbers out that I thought it would probably be worth. And she came back and actually said she would sell it to me for less than that. Wow. I, I was like, really? You mean it? <laughs> if birthday had come early. So, of course, I, I took her up on it. And when I got it in the mail, you know, I'm holding this thing and just... Again, squeeing my pants <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> so I, I took a bunch of pictures of it, too, to show to the fan community to get confirmation, um, especially from Sarah, Galacticat. Mm -hmm. And she agreed that it, that it was definitely a prototype. So we still don't know who the artist was, that, or the doll maker who was that made it. Um, I would love for them to contact me at some point and tell me, because it would just be interesting to know. Uh, but... She she sits in a box. You know, none of the rest of mine, except for the ones that are still met in box, um, are box. They're just out on the shelves. But I got a plastic. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but it's something to keep her safe from dust, mm -hmm. um, dirt, etc. So she's up on the shelf in her box with the lights shining on her. <laughs> well, she is she's very so pretty. I love her belt, and I would have loved to have actually seen one of those made. That she's cute. I love yeah. I love the extra. A material in the front it kind of reminds me of the stormy doll where she has the little extra material that's in the front of the skirt good point uh, yeah I, I guess those would be my two prized possessions what about yourself well i really don't have much i, I want a prototype that's you know I, i'd love to have one okay. the only <laughs> the only one that i know of uh was the creator of moon glow still has hers Ooh. But that is the only one that I know about. And she um, says that it looks like any of the other moon glows you find. And I was like, oh, huh. bummer. But yeah. <laughs> she did She did say um, on the website, there, there's an article. She did say that um, there was a team of people. And even though, you know, she was the designer, um, they gave the work to other people to actually make the dolls. The, Interesting. They had the sketches and they gave it to the uh, the people who actually did the sewing. And they said, well, this is what I want. Make it. And these people would, would sew these outfits. And, and one thing that definitely made me think that yours really was a prototype is the fact that the dress is not a rainbow already. It's they took the colors of the fabric and they sewed it together to be mm -hmm. a rainbow, kind of like how Puppy Bright and Tickle Pink have that rainbow fabric. At first I thought, well, is it just the Tickle Pink fabric? No, it's not. It's different. Yep. She is very unique. Um, I do have some film cells, uh, which are just basically, um, at this point, I have concluded that the film cells that you can even find, if you have to find them on eBay, 
or it's just little little frames or slides. Those are the Rainbow mm-hmm. Bright trailer that was in oh. and the person got the strip and cut it up. That's why you only get certain select scenes. You can see the original trailer that it is on Amazon.com if you go to the uh, where they have the Star Stealer um, video to stream. They have the trailer, and that trailer is the same that's on that film strip. No way, that's awesome. <laughs> and uh, so I have, I have, I have the uncut trailer, and I also have some film cells. Wicked. Uh, but I was able to get original production art. Cool. Um, from uh, the Golden Books. Uh, apparently it was uh, artwork that was used for um, the character concept. Not really concept, but the, the final design. They actually have little dates on them. And because uh, I, was, I was trying to find the one for Rainbow. I was like, when was the Rainbow design finalized? And I was looking through the pages because they're all finalized. They have a finalized date stamp. And no way. So the Rainbow Bright has a date on hers. Starlight has a date on him. Uh, Twink a date on him. Uh, Red Butler and Rainbow Bright were the first ones they did. <laughs> yes. Woo! They were the, that makes me happy. They were the first ones they had the Rainbow Bright design and the Red Butler design first. <laughs> and what were the dates on those? Do you remember? Uh, no, they're 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 currently packed up because I'm in the middle of starting to move too. Yes, you are. Congratulations. <laughs> Where I will be having my own little rainbow room. Woohoo! Uh, Everybody should have a rainbow room. Uh, <laughs> I should have my own little rainbow room and so that I can go through and catalog everything because I like to do that. It, it, I think it feeds my OCD. I just... Oh, totally. I, every time I get something new, I have to add it to my list. Mm-hmm. Um. But that would have to be... Those are the only rare pieces that I can say that I have. Um, I have a few things that are unusual. But, mm-hmm. uh, like, I have um, Rainbow Bright Telephone. Oh, I love those. They're so cute. Um, it, it, It's where you hook one telephone to the other. And you can actually talk on them when you have AA batteries in it. Oh, seriously? I didn't know you could do that and uh you can you can find them on ebay in sets usually but sometimes you only find one uh but all they do is that they actually have a huge huge long cord and it plugs into the back of the phone and you put uh d batteries in it and then you turn the wheel and it goes bzz, bzz. <laughs> that's the other person calling you and you get to pick it up and you can actually hear them and when i've actually taken it apart <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in it. So I took it apart, and it's just basic stuff. When you take off the headset, it is copper wire coiled. Wow. Around, and there's a little plate on top. So that's what you're hearing is it's transferring with the current from the battery that's transferring the voice. But it's not like crystal clear, like us talking over the phone or even right now. But it's it's cute, and I can understand how little kids would absolutely love it. But oh, totally. I think it should have had a better ring than bzz, bzz. Yeah, totally. Play like the Rainbow Bright theme or something. Yeah. <laughs> I guess because back then they didn't have the micro technology, I would have loved to have had yeah. a bright belt to press it and go swoosh or something. Right? <laughs> you know, I wanted that so bad. You know, I, I wanted the, the belt to do, to do a noise or if you pressed a little hand, it did a noise. And one plot line that I always thought was a sad thing is they never kept the glowing ball after Peril in the Pits. Yeah, that was really cool. All right. But um, <laughs> now, do you have a favorite episode? Peril in the Pits. Yes. Totally. Same here. Agreed. I don't know why. There's just something about it that I adore. To me, the animation is more bubbly. It's definitely smoother. I I like the little bitty um, character designs where, you know, like Twink will do a little wink here. He has little buck teeth in some scenes. (laughs) Um, You're like, 
Hey, no, Starlight, kick me! And he has little buck teeth. That's so cute. <laughs> and uh, Rainbow Bright, you know, she always does these little facial expressions where, like, she read, like, when she goes, he's never come into Rainbow Land before. And she puts her hand on her cheek and her eye just switched up just a little bit. And it's so cute! Yep! <laughs> it's cute! <laughs> of course, being Rainbow Bright fans, I don't even know if I should bring this up. But were you Team Brian or Team Red? Oh my! This could be an episode in itself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want? You wait until later. I'll, honest, I'll 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 give you the short answer. Mm -hmm. I've always been Team Red since childhood. I'm not really sure why. Although, oh, this this brings up something that I forgot to say before. I must have seen Peril in the Pits when I was a kid. I don't remember watching it. I don't really remember any of the episodes from childhood, but I must have because my Red Butler doll from when I was a kid, which, which I still have, I've got 12 inch Rainbow Bright Red Butler and Romeo, the big Romeo. Um, red has a little red smudge on his cheek, which I recall putting there with a marker or some sort. <laughs> and I was imitating the whole kiss on the cheek that she gives Brian. Yes. And so, obviously, in my five or six-year-old mind, Red Butler was who the kiss should have gone to. <laughs> so I provided it myself. <laughs> it's still there. I honestly believe they should have had more characters. Yeah. They had more. I mean, not that, that Rainbow Bright had, you know, no characters in it, but, you know, you had all the color kids. But I did feel bad that there was only two boys. And, yeah, you know, and and then I I really think I feel bad for Lurky, because I think that he was just adorable and he didn't mean to be bad. He, exactly, I love Lurky. He was not bad. He was just drawn that way. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all Murky's fault because he put the gloom cloud over his head and controlled him. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. You know that. That's true because it was only in the books. Yes. Um. But yes, I, I completely agree. Lurky is largely misunderstood. I like the theory that he's a large deformed sprite. <laughs> I think that would just be fantastic if it were true. <laughs> They're in the German tapes, which um, I will have to talk to Sunspire again about those, is the German tapes, they actually had whole storylines and everything that never got to the United States, and we don't know what's in them, but apparently Lurky had a brother in those. Ooh. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, Lurky has a brother in Germany somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> das Doppelganger. Yes, das Lurky. No. <laughs> I don't know what his name is. I'll have to look it up. <laughs> All of our German fans are cringing right now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, now, um, what is your... Oh, wait, what's... You said your favorite episode, but... Mine was Peril in the Pits also. I absolutely... Because, again, I love the, the animation in that was just a lot cleaner. And the story, to me, was more fanciful. And I loved it. And I loved Brian. And, and the idea of Rainbow Bright actually meeting somebody. Because, in a way, that broke the wall for all of us. Because yeah, he was the only person that could see Rainbow Bright. And he was her way of getting to Earth. Which, mm -hmm. why they never keep that is beyond me. I know! <laughs> That seriously could have been explored. I mean, like Care Bears, for instance, they always had little friends on Earth that they were coming down to cheer up. Um, I don't know why Rainbow Bright couldn't have done that more often. Well, a lot of 80s cartoons honestly did not stick with continuity. Even yeah, did that. I mean, they, they introduced the Care Bear cousins in the Care Bear movie, and then in the Care Bear movie 2, they take away, was it the first one, they took away their tummy marks and they had to earn them, and then the next one, they're there from babies and they have them. Made sense. <laughs> no sense. It's a parallel universe, you know. <laughs> and then, I always wanted to find out in Strawberry Shortcake where, whatever happened to Baby Needs a Name. Yeah. Did they ever name her? I don't know. I'm not in that fandom. I'm in this one. Um, <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite main character? Um, Besides Rainbow Bright, because we all love her. Of course we do. Of course we do. Um, that's a toughie. That might again be Red. Uh, well, or maybe Starlight. He's so vain and ridiculous, but he's great. 
<laughs> and he's a really, really good friend to Rainbow. Uh, or, or Twink. You know, I love Twink, too. That, that's a tough one. What about you? I... I've always had a soft spot for Twink just because I love the way he was voiced. Yes. I, he, the inflections and everything were just adorable. I used to go around and I, if you, if I would say something, I would say it in this style of Twink. There's a video I have on YouTube of me getting my rainbow bright bicycle. And no way what I did is I squeed rainbow. And I'm like, Oh my God. I <laughs> You were totally channeling Twink. Totally. That's epic. <laughs> I've got to see this now. <laughs> it is on YouTube. <laughs> Sweet. I will put it, I will actually see if I can edit in a little clip of it into uh, the video portion of the podcast. Perfect. Or at least link to it in the sidebar. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> other than Twink, my pro- favorite would probably be Shy Violet. Uh, because she was more like me. I was, I want to say that I was more reserved. I probably was. And I was probably you know, climbing up the walls, you know, too much sugar. But uh, <laughs> I want to say I was quiet. Uh, but the fact that also she wears glasses and I do too later on in life, you know, I was, mm. when I, as an adult, I related more to Shy Violet as a kid. Twink. Nice. Uh, I like it. And what about, and Red might have been one of my favorite. I was just going to say Red might have been one of my favorites because I was a huge tomboy as a child. Um, like you, I was big into He-Man. So I dressed like a boy and I had a haircut like a boy until like third grade. Um, so maybe I related to Red more than I did even Rainbow Bright at the time. Now it's different. but And Red's my favorite color. It always has been. So that probably plays into it as well. And I know he can be a bit of a bully and a know-it-all sometimes, but... <laughs> I I don't know. I can't be mad at him. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he, he he means well, but yeah. Even in his character description, it always said he was very boastful. Yeah. And you know, I always thought that Chris should take him down a level or two. <laughs> Which he could do easily, <laughs> I'm sure. I love that, uh, speaking of Chris, which uh, he was in the Star Sealer film and in a couple of the episodes of the television show, um, that at least in the production art from the press kit, he has a star on his cheek. Seriously? Yep. He has... I never noticed that. If you look at the Chris uh, picture, he actually has a star on his cheek, and it's not in any other frame except for that one. But, oh, that's cool. Um, so I always thought, and personally, that he was supposed to be the male equivalent of Rainbow. Yeah, that would make sense then. Yeah, on Spectra. Uh, so Interesting. I wonder if it's his, if, you know, it, not to be creepy, but I was like, is Chris her brother? <laughs> Dude, that would be crazy. <laughs> well, they had, well, had that love-hate relationship. Don't touch me. <laughs> totally, totally. You know, maybe she when she left Earth, her Earth parents had another child, and maybe she wasn't aging, and then they sent him off to save a world, too, and then I really have no idea I'm making stuff up. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think that would have, that would totally have been a, uh, an episode I would want to play with right there. I was like, how did it happen? And who says that she's from Earth? Oh, yeah, it is in the, well, it is in the new description that she's an orphan girl from Earth. But, you know, we don't have to adhere to that. That's the new people that I don't trust much. Um, we don't we don't watch that and we don't watch Robot Chicken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, which those people do their homework. Oh, my God. They do. It's kind of scary. <laughs> oh, my God. Robot Chicken does their homework. Uh Yeah. Well, is there... I was going to ask you if there was something other than... Well, other than what we've said so far, that you love so much about Rainbow Bright. Well, I was always, I always loved color as a kid. I, I have several many pictures of me wearing at least a rainbow at some point. If it wasn't that my favorite rainbow shirt, which is the one in my drawing, which you will see on the logo of the Rainbow Bright, of, of Brightcast, uh, that is my favorite shirt that I had as a kid. There were so many pictures of me wearing it. But if I wasn't wearing a rainbow, I just. And it made me happy and it made me feel magic. I mm-hmm. I would sit in a room with a gem and 
put it in the sunlight and just see the rainbows dance across the wall. And I was rainbow bright. And I wouldn't have had that. I mean, no other character at that time. I mean, I like strawberry shortcake. Don't get me wrong. But she didn't make me feel like I was magic. Mm-hmm. She made me hungry. <laughs> 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 but no, we all want to be magic. We and and one thing that I thought was cute was in the new Rainbow Bright uh, that they tried to, or maybe are still trying to release uh, on RainbowBright.com is they gave her a transformation sequence. <laughs> That's true. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> I was trying to figure what were they thinking? What happened to the color belt? Okay, so the color belt gets destroyed and they put the last fragments into a crystal and put it on top of a scepter. And I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we could write better plots than they do. <laughs> we had we have more research. <laughs> I don't know. Um But I'm the same way. It it brings out that bubbly part of my personality. It and it enhances it. It gives more color to it, more depth. I don't know. Um which is it's kind of odd. Um I never associated myself so much as the bubbly happy personality even though apparently all my friends think that that's who I am so yay for that I'm glad it comes across that way when sometimes I feel the opposite um but I maybe I just didn't realize it back when I was younger that other people saw me that way and so in high school that's one of the the reasons that made me collect it and get you know fall back in love with Rainbow Bright uh during that age, is I was wearing this rainbow shirt to a... I was in theater. We had these speech meet competitions. And I wore this rainbow shirt to a speech meet competition. And one of my friends was... you know, As soon as I walked in the room, he's just like, Hey, Rainbow Bright, what's up? And then everybody started calling me Rainbow Bright. And it just became this thing. It was my mantra. She, I had a Rainbow Bright doll that was my good luck charm that I started carrying to all the future speech meets. Um, I even had some of the younger people in our, in our high school singing in the rain, in the theater class, singing, um, <laughs> Starlight Rainbow Bright. It was hilarious. It just, it became my thing. And I would listen to the songs in my car as I'm driving around, you know, 17 year old listening to Rainbow Bright, but whatever. It was awesome. And I think that's just stayed with me. And anytime I think these days that I hear somebody say, oh, you're always so happy and bubbly. I kind of attribute that to rainbow i think that she helps me develop that part of myself that optimistic um always trying to make others happy and look at the rainbow you know kind of thing i i really attribute a lot of that to rainbow bright you have always from that it appears that you've always um had a oh god what is the word like a like like a spirit animal. <laughs> yes. If, if, if Rainbow, yes. if there, if you had a cartoon character spirit animal, it would be Rainbow Bright. It would. Yes. And yeah, I've I've actually had people say that just the rainbow is my spirit animal, my spirit element, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, it it is I your so element much of harmony. That... Totally. I love that. I guess it's been a part of me for so long now, and people have just continually associated me with rainbows that almost on a daily basis, someone will post something rainbow related to my Facebook wall every day. Or somebody will say, Hey, I was driving around and I saw a rainbow in the sky and I thought of you, you know, it's things like that that just make me so happy. And I, I feel like somehow I am sharing the rainbow to, to steal your line. Um, <laughs> when I, make people notice rainbows because kind of like Brian, a lot of people have their nose to the ground. They're thinking about what they have to do that day. They're just trying to make it from one day to the next. They're not stopping to smell the roses, but then they see a rainbow and they stop for a minute and they think, Oh, Katie would love this. <laughs> and it makes them smile. And it, it's just something they may not have noticed otherwise. Um, and it makes me so happy when everybody <laughs> posts those things to me. I mean, just the fact they think of me at all. Um, is is reassuring and, and comforting and wonderful uh but that it's rainbow related is makes it even better so i think as i get older i'm just more and more becoming this rainbow queen <laughs> of some sort <laughs> uh well i think the, mm -hmm. the last question on my list mm -hmm. 
was, it, I, I think it probably has answered itself already, but do you see yourself being a Rainbow Bright fanatic for the rest of your life? It's lasted 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's kind of the way I see it. It's stuck around this long. I can't imagine it's going to go anywhere anytime and soon. Now we just have to get other people to listen. That's the thing. That is correct. It's it, it, it's alive for us, but there are so many people that have forgotten because they're glum faces and they're not looking up. Exactly. And look up, glum face. Yes, when we need to try to cheer them up. So that's one more reason why we are doing the podcast, um, uh, so that we can share our plethora of rainbow bright knowledge with you, answer any questions that you might have. And to, of course, share the rainbow and help you discover or maybe even rediscover the rainbow. That is Rainbow Bright, which we love. Absolutely. Very well said. Yay! (laughs) I feel like the other fandoms for 80s cartoons have gotten just, well, overall more press um, through re-releases, new cartoons, new dolls. Rainbow Bright's gotten a few spatterings here and there, but... For the overall, she's been ignored, sadly. Well, and I can understand why people got mad when they re-released Rainbow Bright for the 25th anniversary. And they changed her. They made her taller. They made her thin. They made her... uh, To me, she didn't look that bad. I thought she was kind of cute. I didn't think the dolls were as cute as they could have been. Um, yeah. The toddler doll, the smaller doll, well, actually the bigger doll that looked smaller. Yes. She was adorable. I thought she was cute. Um, I agree. Why couldn't they all have looked like that? Yes. And um, I would have liked for them to at least have played a little bit more with a Stormy, but I feel like Stormy is like this carrot that they're like dangling this cookie that they're like, oh, totally. they're like, you want this? We got to get this many subscribers. And then you can't have it. Uh huh. I, <laughs> I can totally see. What was it? Maddie Collector? Is that the one that does the He Man? Yes. Since Mattel did Rainbow mm-hmm. Bright in the 80s, I can see them doing a special 30th anniversary Rainbow Bright Stormy doll that you cost like $400. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I could totally see that too. <laughs> That's hysterical, because you know, they know that we're suckers, and we would totally buy it. Well, what, what's the one thing that like, they keep never getting to? In the 2003, they released the Rainbow Bright dolls, Rainbow Bright Red Butler, Canary Yellow, and Patio Green, which were the original dolls that were released when they originally released the Dine back in 1984. And they didn't get the sales that they projected, so they didn't make any more characters. Hmm... And, yep. and I'm sitting here going, first of all, why did you make them open boxed? Well, yes. are we going to play with them? Technically, the hardcore collector is going to keep them in a box and put them on a shelf. But exactly. It, so they can get covered in dust. Uh, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is the open box dolls. Agreed. And they they didn't need to do that. They should have just they kept the the closed box formula. That way you could kept them in the box if you wanted, and everything was nice. Agreed. <laughs> All right. So is there anything else that we need to talk about? Did you see um, the picture that eighties tees posted on Facebook? <laughs> do what? Eighties <laughs> tees. Posted a picture of Rainbow Bright slash Princess Bride on Facebook. Are you serious? I am dead. Oh, I have to look at this right now. They posted um, a link about cereal boxes and Rainbow Bright. And yes, it saw that. It called it Rainbow Brute. Yes. So they made a parody picture of Rainbow Brute <laughs> and it's Andre the Giant. Oh my god, I see it! That's hilarious! <laughs> oh, I hope they put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, that makes me so happy. <laughs> Fortified with Iocane powder. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it so much. 
I am such a fan of 80stees.com. They are fantastic. <laughs> oh, I like one of the comments. Hopefully it tastes better than mostly did. That's never a good flavor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm so glad you showed that to me. That is so fantastic. <laughs> I that, um, when I was coming home from work and I was just like, that is just awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, is there anything else that we need to talk about? So anyway, um, I think that sums us up pretty good. We are Rainbow Bright fanatics to the nth power, and always will be. <laughs> and we would love to share our knowledge with you guys and excite you about Rainbow Bright again. Yes. We want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for downloading, and hope that we have made your day a little bit brighter. Uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And until next time, have, have a rainbow day! day! Be back. Don't go.